Live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We're back in Madrid, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with my co-host, Peter Burris. This is day one of HPE Discover Madrid. Parvesh Sethi is here as the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Global Client Services at HPE Point Next. Dave, it's Parvesh, good to be thanks here. thanks very much for coming in, back in the cube. Good to be here. Last time we good saw you, you were 30 days into the job. That's right. <laughs> Maybe 45 days. Yeah. So, how's the first six, seven months been? It's been busy. It's uh, actually been uh, very good. Uh, in the midst of the transformation change that's taking place within the company, it's actually been really good to also working with the clients on the hybrid IT journey side of the house. And uh, since last we spoke, uh, you know, we also did the CTP acquisition, which has been very well received as well. Well, I love it. You, when you guys go and talk about transformations to customers, yes. they say, oh, we're experts. Yes, we, <laughs> there you go. We exactly. live this. Right? <laughs> live this every I day. Mean, does that <laughs> call, you know, go, get, enter into the discussions with your customers? It must, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it gives us a lot of credibility, especially when you take a look at uh, the journey they're on, and we talk a lot about hybrid IT today, making it simple, and uh, one of the things we always talk to them about is that uh, hybrid IT is not just the infrastructure cloud. You really have to take a look at the full spectrum of the services and how they're being delivered. You know, could be as a service uh, providers, could be um, you know, subscribing to a platform and hosting it on-prem, off-prem, private, dedicated infrastructure, or public cloud. Just a mix of those and being able to uh, decide as to what are the characteristics that you should look at and what will decide as to what goes into public cloud, private cloud, or where should those services come from. What do you tell the skeptics? You know, the, the guys say, eh, why should I do hybrid cloud? Why don't I just put everything in the cloud? Do you get those questions or is it more customers saying, hey, help me with my hybrid problem? What's the Almost every story? single client meeting that I've been in, everyone acknowledges the world is hybrid IT. And uh, I have not met a single client yet who says all of their workloads are going into public cloud. Uh, I think a lot of it depends on what they want uh, to achieve. You know, if they want a lot of elasticity and uh, if they need SLAs or if they want to bring the workload back in, security compliance or organizational, cultural governance processes, performance characteristics, a lot, lot of those factors come into play as to deciding what goes where. And I think uh, almost everyone says that uh, you know, it's never going to be 100% this or that. It's just based on the characteristics that will really dictate where the workload or the application sits. And, and that's the characteristics of the data. Is that fair? Because it used to yeah. be, oh, security. Yeah. And you know, public cloud is fine security. Maybe right. not exactly the way you want it done, right. but, but it, is it more the realization about you just can't move all the data into the cloud or you can't force your business into the cloud? What's, what are customers yeah, saying Yeah, I think there? part of it also comes into, for example, governance as well. Mm -hmm. If uh, there's HIPAA compliance workloads, as an example, that may dictate your decision in a certain way. Uh, but you're right though. I mean, security used to be one of the big concerns, but uh, you know, it's more about now, if a person has decided they want to move a certain workload over, it's really more about how do you get them comfortable? How do you de-risk uh, that move? And it, this is where thinking through the journey roadmap really becomes critical. But just because of that one aspect, it's not necessarily stopping people from moving, but it's really baking that into the design criteria as to how you move it. Well, while we're on security, yeah. I mean, in the last five years, it's obviously become a board level topic. Yeah. People have, I think, come to the recognition, maybe the recognition, maybe the spending hasn't shifted, but the <laughs> mindset's shifted that we yeah. can't just create a moat. Right. You know? <laughs> They're going to get in. Yep. You know, once they get in, we have to respond. That's we right. We need analytics and response right. mechanisms. And so, um, how are they coming to you for help? What are they asking yeah. you for? And how are you helping? Yeah. So I think it certainly comes into more into place. It cannot be an afterthought. It's really more about security in, and the governance has to be kind of baked in from the front end of it. So everything that we do, whether it's any solution that we're doing from IoT perspective, all the way to the hybrid IT. From an architectural blueprint perspective, uh, we have in, in made sure the security is front and center of every one of those designs as well as the discussion criteria with the client. And so when you start looking at it's not about security posture assessment, it's also kind of looking at designing security from an you know, architectural blueprint perspective and making sure that if somebody's talking about hybrid IT architecture or a, an IoT use case, that security is front and center of the design criteria. Mm -hmm. If you think about the challenges that 
your sales, well, let's step back. If you think about the challenges that everybody has right. at conceiving of how best to associate data, workload, and cloud implementation, hybrid, on-premise, off-premise, whatever it is, there are, you have to have a common framework, yes. what used to be called a computing model, a way of thinking of how you address the problem, yeah. that your sales people have to have, your support people have to have, you have to have, your customer has to have, are there like two or three things that you're telling your people to look forward or look for and working with their customers to help provide those clues? So crucial to getting everybody on the same page early as to where workloads are going to end up, where data is going to end up. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a great question. And one of the things that we're making sure that our folks are not just talking about the hardware piece of it. It's really more about before the hardware discussion takes place, making sure that we completely align on the workload strategy. As part of the workload strategy, you know, we will do workshops and we'll make sure that uh, we totally understand in terms of what is it they're trying to accomplish in terms of the workload migrations. And before we even get to the migration topic, we really go through this uh, 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 criteria in terms of assessing the workloads, which workloads are more suited to go into cloud environment and in areas which uh, we may need to re-architect the application or rewrite it, uh, we also kind of crack, you know, put those into a you know, specific category and take a look at making sure that is the performance uh, criteria more, uh, you know, is it uh, uh, the uh, security, is it uh, more about the, um, the TCO, and, is, and more and more you start to see it's not really a brokerage discussion, it's really more of strategic sourcing discussion because you're more and more starting to talk about uh, which, which, where is the best source to get the service from because there's no shortage of choices uh, that they have today and where they can provide these services from. So it's really more about understanding what they're trying to achieve and then understanding the, the sourcing policy, understanding the alignment between the IT and the governance piece of it, the whole business side of it, and the IT side of it, and then it's really more about the supply chain management. You heard about once a fair today, but it's really more about how do you take this complexity out of the hybrid IT environment and making sure that you can provide the automation and that capability uh, to provide it as easy of an environment for them to have a single pane of glass. So those are the key pieces of the framework that we try to make sure everyone is on the same page. You mentioned uh, cloud technology partners. Right. We heard about OneSphere uh, right. today. That's obviously the sure. CTP is part of that announcement. Small company, but very high quality, yeah. customer base, very specialized. Right. Take us through the, the rationale for the acquisition, sure. kind of what the, what the value is to your customers and where sure. it's headed. I think, uh, you know, last time when we spoke, we talked about our overall strategy. One of the key pillars is really around making hybrid IT simple. And, uh, and we know when we talk about hybrid IT, it cannot be just the on-prem part of the storyboard. You have to talk about the public cloud side of it as well. And this is where the CTP acquisition really comes into play to really plug a hole. I mean, we had some uh, uh, capability in-house, but not to the extent of what CTP brings to the table. I mean, they are premier partner to AWS, uh, premier partner to Google, silver partner to uh, Microsoft Azure. And so having that kind of credibility and the uh, recognition in the US and North America certainly gives us some more credibility with our customers talking about the hybrid IT story. And then taking that uh, uh, skill set, assets and the IP, we want to take that and leverage our channel community as well as our uh, install base, as well as our capabilities in Europe, as well as Asia, and help scale that globally is really a way we're going to leverage this uh, skill set and assets. So we're in beautiful Madrid, Spain, at the EMEA Discover. Uh, cloud is a global phenomenon, yeah. but it's not uniform. Right. From, a, from your perspective of providing services to customers that have global needs as well as local needs, take us through how Europe is different. Start from the observation that we've got North American cloud players, public cloud players, we've got Asian public cloud players, we have not an obvious European cloud player. Hmm. How is it different on a global basis? And what is HP doing to mask those differences, HPE doing to mask those differences from your global and local customers? Right. So I think one of the things you're, uh, one of the things you are finding here is uh, the need, and we talked about this earlier today, uh, the need for, you know, as a consumption models. And you're seeing that the trend globally. And more and more people, more and more customers are talking about not wanting to necessarily own, 
but uh, how do they pay for what they use? And so one of the things we do is from a framework perspective, we really deployed a very consistent framework, unified transformational framework, UTF. And uh, we did apply for a patent for it as well. But the idea there is to leverage a common methodology, common framework to take a, a client through in terms of how to go about this cloud journey. Everyone is on a different place in terms of the cloud adoption, the digital transformation journey. But the, through the experiences that we have, I mean, we do well over 10,000 engagements a year. Leveraging that IP, we have really built like four interconnected journey roadmaps. And uh, so a client, you can take any client, whether a service provider or enterprise, they're somewhere on that uh, journey roadmap. And they may be in a different place, but being able to talk to them, leveraging that the common IP and say, look, this is where you're at today, here's the roadmap that you can take to get to your desired end state. And that has really resonated with the clients. And if they truly don't want to own the infrastructure and they just want to pay as you go, and this is where the whole HPE GreenLake announcements have really come into play. So I think that those themes, when you take a look at the performance characteristics, organizational governance issues, because one of the things that we find is 70% plus of the clients that we talk to, they have not been able to really maximize the full potential of what hybrid IT gives them. And one of the major hurdles they see and it doesn't matter whether you talk to a client in North America or EMEA or APJ, it's really the lack of focus on management of change. It's the organizational, the cultural barriers that get in the way. It's the competencies, the organizational processes that get in the way. Right. So those are the pieces that we want to make sure as part of the UTF framework. IT is just one of the principles. And out of the other domains, management of change is one of the key elements that we see, which is common across all the client base that we talk to. When you go back to the early part of this decade right. and you observe sort of the, the big, the, remember the big data meme, it sort of exploded in right. 2010, 2011, 2012. It ended up being a very complex, of course, but also very services-led um, engagements sort of right. because it was so complex. IoT is somewhat similar. You know, yeah. It's very data-oriented, <laughs> yep. it's very complex. So talk about services and the relationship with IoT, the opportunity for, for you and right. how you're helping add value to customers. Now that's a great question also, Dave. I, mean, I think when you take a look at the IoT, I think we're starting to get past uh, that hype cycle. And a lot of players will talk about they got 100 plus of proof of concepts going in their lab, but they just have not been able to bring it into the mainstream. And so one of the things we're talking to clients about is uh, start to move away from the terms like proof of concept. Focus on proof of value. Because at the end of the day, if you cannot help your line of business accelerate time to value, no matter how great of a concept you have, it's never going to see the day of light. Mm. So this is where the point next services really come into play with the whole advisory-led motion because it's still very much a services-led motion today. Working with the clients around how they can really help shorten the time to value, accelerate time to value. And if we can take even one or two use cases they have in their labs today, and show them how they can get to 50, 60 million dollars of savings, like one of the oil and gas customers who we're just talking to, same thing we see in the retail, manufacturing, is just taking some of those proof points and saying this is how you can actually bring them into the mainstream and make sure they also start to have the business alignment. That's one of the common things you hear from the CXOs here this week, is the business alignment between the IT and the OT side if they're talking to uh, the IoT use cases. Because without the business alignment, believe me, you're not going to yeah. be able to get the management of change that you're seeking to drive. So do you expect, or are you seeing yet you know, new business models? You talk about the cost savings, but what about sort of new business models sure. emerging from those discussions and opportunities? No, I definitely. I mean, if you take a look at whether it's the hospitality suite, you know, Kirti talked about main stage, about even the retail experience, which is starting to be very different. So when you look at the new value that's been created, you know, uh, you know a lot of us who travel to get here, uh, when we check in the hotel, a number of places now, you can check in digitally 24 hours in advance. You never have to stand in line for a queue, don't have to flash up your credit card, because the hotels have really now started to leverage the digital transformation where 24 hours in advance, you can check in online, you, uh, they can, they'll give you a digital key, so on your phone, when you walk into the hotel, as soon as you're within a threshold, you get onto your Wi-Fi network, and uh, you see a personalized message, and it has also, the directions to your room. And when you get to your room, you'd use the digital key to get in. Think about the possibilities it creates to launch new services. Mm -hmm. uh, for not just the hotel, but it's also affiliates, the partners, for pushing specific targeted advertising offers while you're in uh, Madrid here or some other place. So you're starting to see these new value creations, even though behind the scenes, you still have them you know, 
uh, uh, integrate a lot of their digital critical business systems with CRM, reservation systems, uh, uh, or smart uh, buildings. You have to still make sure the security is in play, and so it is really you checking in, not someone else, as well as making sure the room is available, but it's really more focused on the business outcome. And this is one of the things you're seeing, even in our portfolio shift, it's no longer talking about some implementation services, integration services. When we sit down with the clients, it's really more focused around the, what outcome are we delivering. It's not, not talking about, look, who can sell you X number of servers or who can sell you devices. More about, here's the business outcome that we'll deliver for you, and this is what you're going to be able to do with that additional value creation. Do you mean I might be able to not have to wait in line a half hour when I check into a Las Vegas hotel in the future? Absolutely. <laughs> no, that, that will never happen. <laughs> uh, uh, no, definitely, I mean, you see improvements every single year, and uh, hopefully, you know, whether you walk into a retail shop, be able to experience differently, you know, walking from home into uh, a branch store, and what that experience will look like, it'll be very, very different than what some of the people experience today. Lots of changes coming, all sort of based on the data. Yep. Uh, Parvesh, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's great no, to absolutely. see you Absolutely, it's great to be here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Thank keep you. it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest, Dave Vellante from Peter Burris. This is theCUBE, we're live from HPE Discover Madrid 2017.